Hello dear Maxers, in this video I want to show you how to record uh, your visuals made uh, within Max using the Siphon framework, so using the Siphon external. To get the Siphon external, uh, go to the package icon and uh, from the package manager download the Siphon package that is currently in the second page here. So you download the package, install the package and then you will have the, the siphon external. This is that is this object here is called GitGL siphon. You need this. You have two objects now: the siphon client, the siphon server. So the client uh, uh, is the one that receives the video. So you will use this uh, when you are uh, sending video from another application like uh, BBVVP or the Resolum. Uh, um, uh, but uh, you want to use the Siphon server from Max to send the video from Max to another application. So let's create the GHGL Cypher server. This uh, object takes an attribute that is the server name. Uh, we can call this uh, Jitter, for example. And uh, then if you want to record, you need also another app that is called the Siphon Recorder. You can get this uh, from the we official website of Siphon. So when you go to the official website, this is the website, you click on this icon, this is the Siphon Recorder, and you download it from this link. Once you have it, you have this icon, you just open it and you have this window. If you tape command uh, comma, you can access the preferences of this uh, app, so it will make you choose uh, the codec for your video to record quality, the frame rate and the dimensions and then where to save it and so on. Also if you want to record the audio from your system or the microphone etc you can route your audio from Max with Soundflower for example. So let's do a little try. Let's create a JIT world object. Name of the context is V. So a full sample uh, full scaling anti -aliasing, full scene anti aliasing, and then let's set the size of the window. Let's set this uh, to um, 480 to 270, so a ratio of uh, 69. And um, let's set the window's position to be somewhere on the right side of my screen. Yeah, so let's create a toggle to. Uh, activate the world. Let's create an object that is going to be rendered. So, GGL grid shape, for example, scale 0 0.2. And now this is our object. And uh, the siphon record is not uh, is receiving um, an empty texture because uh, this the siphon server is not receiving any texture. So if we give the if we give the cheat world object the output texture attribute flag, so if we flag this uh, attribute to one and connect this to the GGL Siphon server, now the world scene uh, will be sent from the um, from the world object to the Siphon server and appear here on the Siphon recorder, and then you can record it. Uh, let's make uh, let's make uh, some animation. For example, let's create a counter, connect it with the bank. Let's divide that by some number. For example, twenty, and then let's take the sine and the cosine of this number, and let's use this as the x and y dimensions. It's going to be a bit too much because sine and cosine goes from minus one to one. So let's divide this number for um, for some uh, for the half scalar mod for the back object set to one. So this operation will be applied with a scalar to every element of the list. And then let's say let's create a message dollar one and dollar two zero for the zeta. And let's connect these to the grid shape. So now our grid shape will hopefully move. 
like that. And uh, if you see uh, the y dimension, the y axis is reversed here on the siphon recorder window. So uh, in order to reverse it, uh, you just have to create a GGL pix object or a GGL slab and put in between the chain of the so in between the cheat world texture output and the siphon server. I don't know why, but apparently this fixes the the problem. So when I when I discover why why I will I will probably tell this in another video. So uh, that's how you can do it using the output texture of the JIT world object. Uh, let's note that when you change the dimensions of the window here, also the dimensions of the texture that's being sent to si the siphon server is going to be uh, changed. So also the dimensions of this texture are going to change. So in order to uh, resize in the window not to affect the, the siphon record, uh, you can use the dim attribute of the JitWorld object. The dim attribute sets the dimensions of the internal texture. So now also this texture will be uh, 9920 by 1080. So also on the Siphon Recorder, even if you resize this window, the dimensions of the the dimensions of the textures being sent to the GGL Siphon server will be unchanged. For example, let's create to visualize that. Let's create a JIT matrix object and use the matrix info object. And see that now this is a 90 uh, 20 by uh, 1080 chart texture. Um, actually, it's a, it's a matrix being converted into a matrix here. So char. Otherwise, it would be float 32, and uh, you can see that uh, it's, uh, it's a full HD um, texture, even if we resized our window, because we choose that dim attribute here in the JIT world object. So, uh, but you can see that when uh, moving, uh, resizing our window, the, the ratio of the texture being sent to the GTL siphon is also being changed. So the ratio is not anymore uh, 60, 60 on 9, but uh, it's uh, something different. So uh, in order to, um, to avoid that, I created a window that is uh, 480 by 270. So it's, uh, yeah, as we say, it is a 16, uh, 16 over 9 ratio but uh, if you want to avoid that so be free to resize your window and uh, keep the ratio you want to not use the output texture from the word object but you want to create a ggl node object so the ggl node will is used to capture the scene so let's try uh, let's draw this uh, grid shape to the node to the node uh, object and also let's give the node object the dimensions of full HD. So now it will be full HD um, texture and then we can send we can send this texture directly to the siphon recorder and also visualize that uh, with a video plane on our main window. So if we assign this texture to the video plane, and now you see that it's still uh, reversed. Let's do the GGL pix trick. Yeah, and now it's fixed. For example, now you can also use a GGL pass to add some effects to the um, to the final scene. For example, you can also use that with the output texture actually. For example, you can set blue um, width of two, and now uh, you will not uh, recognize the G G GL pass object immediately. So you probably have to connect it to that. Yeah, and also this to that. Let's see. Yeah.
Yeah, so now you can use uh, the GGL pass object, you can use the GGL peaks object to make some other post processing between the, the node and uh, the siphon and visualize that on your window. So, for example, we can multiply this um, some color. I forgot that in the GGL node you also have to set the adapt zero attribute in order not to get this um, texture uh, um, resized by the windows uh, by the window dimension. So if you set adapt zero in the GGL node, it will not get the dimensions of the drawing windows. And when you change uh, the GGL node object where it is attached to a GGL pass, you then have to recreate also the JIT pass because uh, Capture cannot be changed when bound to GGL pass, so you have to recreate that and then, um, then it should work. As you can see, it's a full HD texture once again. So now, when you're going to record your video, when you're happy and you record your video, you should get a full HD video of your visuals. The frame rate depends depends on your machine and uh, on the processes that your patches is doing so this is how you use a GGL siphon to record the output of your uh, the visual output of your patch thank you for watching and seeing you on the next video